All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Man, it's been a long time since I've posted anything. And uh, would you believe that I've been pretty busy? Uh, so I finally have escaped the clutches of the Gulf Coast. I had been there for a little over five years, both enlisted and commissioned. But I finished UCT and I got to walk away. I was allowed to leave. And now I am at Scott. I am in South Illinois, about a half hour from St. Louis, and I'm originally from Cincinnati. I'm from the Midwest area. We got here late February, and there was snow on the ground, and then it it snowed a few times, and uh, we had seen dustings in the South a couple times over the course of five years. We saw as much snow in like a week, having arrived here. It took some getting used to, and it was cold. For a spell, it was down in the teens, and it sucked, but it's it's good. It's good to be out. Uh, I, I always corrected my own students when uh, and whenever it would come up, whenever they would say this. So it's sort of hypocritical that I'm about to say it, but it's good to be back in the real Air Force. <laughs> I mean, AETC is uh, it's its own microcosm, I suppose, and uh, to just be out of that environment and out here again, oh man, it's 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 great. It really is. Uh, additionally, this is my first assignment as an O, so I am officering now, and uh, wow, that is uh, that's going to have a steep learning curve to it. Uh, my commander though is really awesome. I'm not just saying that, and my sponsor was really cool. Everybody's been really cool so far. Uh, right after I got here, I checked in. And my sponsor was like, we're going to do enough so you can start your house hunting leave. I was like, okay, sweet. So um, just checked in with a few offices, submitted my house hunting leave. The commander approved it that day. Like within a few hours, it was like, done, you got a leave number. And I was like, oh, sweet. All right. So then I got my house hunting days, which is up to 10 now. It used to be eight. And now the AFI says you get 10 days. So if you're PCSing and you're applying for a house hunting, go ahead and look up the AFI because you need to uh, put in uh, whatever rule it is, but it is 10 days now. So enjoy those extra 48 hours. Additionally, the commander had already known before I was coming up here that I intended to take paternity leave, which is 21 days for secondary caregivers. And uh, my, my son was born uh, about a week and a half later than he was supposed to. And I was starting UCT about two weeks before I was initially scheduled to. So by the time he was born, and then I started, uh, he was two weeks old when I started UCT. My wife was thrilled. But uh, I had told my sponsor, and he told the commander that, you know, I never got to take paternity, and I still intended to. So took house hunting, came in for a day to submit paternity to leave, and then got my 21 days right off the bat. So I just went to one of my base newcomers, like the finance briefing last Friday, and I got a base newcomers briefing on Tuesday. I've been here for like five weeks, and I'm just now getting newcomer stuff done. So well, <laughs> I'm going to, I better get my BH back pay because housing up here is a little bit more expensive than down south. I'm supposed to get like another $100 or so. So I hope I get that back pay. And then there's per diem, and, and I already got my DLA and everything uh, paid ahead of time. Do that. There's no, there's no reason not to. I've never done it before. And then when they were doing uh, my out processing and they were like, do you want to get DLA paid up front? You either get it now or you get it when you file your trial voucher and everything. And that's, that could be weeks or months down the road. So I was like, well, if there's no like deductions or I got to repay anything, then, then yeah, just give it to me now. And for me, that was like $2,700. So I'm holding my phone up with a, uh, a straw on this Chick-fil-A cup. It's, it's not a very good setup. Anyway, it's been a long time since I've been on here and people have, have come and gone and subscribed or, or left comments behind. Um, some people are still upset that the Air Force has adopted the uh, OCP. They really think this is a, an army exclusive pattern. I mean, just because y'all got to it first, I mean, okay, maybe I'll let you have that. I know Marines would be really upset if anybody else wore Marp hat, but I don't think they were the first ones to it anyway. In the end, uh, the whole point of this, I think, is 
just because of how much more joint we are now than we used to be. There are still separate service branches, but from what I understand, I haven't done it. Air Force, Air Force is deploying and operating a lot more with Army and other branches than they used to. It's just the nature of things. Uh, the Joint Base Initiative from about 10 years ago uh, was probably the first indicator that, uh, hey, you're not just Air Force and Army. You know, you're all part of the DOD family. And uh, to be honest, this thing is a better uniform than the ABU anyway. So that's just that's just a plus. Yeah, uh, if I deploy, which as a second lieutenant, I'm not even on a book. You know what I mean? So I don't know if I'm going to deploy. I don't know if I could because I'm not filling a slot here. So I don't know. I don't know where I'd go. But uh, whenever I deploy, I'll probably be in a joint environment. And that might be what the point of this uh, is eventually. Plus, I think Congress wanted the DOD to adopt a single uniform anyway. So, sorry. This looks like the one that's going to be adopted. Uh, sorry, not sorry, I guess. Uh, I did just look up uh, the OCP AFI, well, Dressed and Parents AFI, to see if there's any new changes or anything. Uh, they have expanded the color options for headgear and for gloves when you're wearing OCPs. So the fleece is still coyote brown. It's got to match the boots. Headgear can be black or coyote brown. And then gloves can be black, coyote brown, or sage green. So if I was you, uh, and the socks can be coyote brown or sage green. Just brown it all up. You got to wear a brown shirt. Wear brown socks. You got to wear the brown boots. Wear brown knit cap and get some brown gloves i've already seen some uh, security forces personnel like at keesler during the winter and here uh wear the coyote brown knit cap the fleece cap i think really and i mean regardless knit cap fleece cap it's a soft head covering that's supposed to keep your head and your ears warm and it looks good the uh, the coyote brown looks good it, it it works it matches the rest of the ensemble so i think that might have been a big thing uh for some reason, they're still pressing forward with Spice Brown officer rank across across the entire uh, pay ladder, except for first lieutenants and uh, lieutenant colonels. I don't understand that. Still don't get it. A captain is not a double second lieutenant, but that's what he's going to look like because he's going to have two butter bars. We wear silver rank unless we're a major or a second lieutenant. So why isn't the embroidered insignia black for all the officer ranks except for second lieutenant and major? Because when you're wearing blues, those are the only ones that are different. Those are the only ones that are different from the rest of the pack. With enlisted, they said everybody's wearing spice brown stripes or chevrons, or whatever. And that makes sense. Yeah, because stripes look the same. You have your white, alternating white and uh, blue. No matter what pay grade you are, if you're an E2 or an E8, you have alternating white and blue on your sleeves. So there's that. But officers have different colored metal depending on what they are. But we're still doing this weird first lieutenant, lieutenant colonel thing. I mean, it's not effective immediately. You can wear, you can be a captain. And wear black captain bars until January or June 2020. And then you have to wear Spice Brown. Then you have to be a double second lieutenant. You have to be a double butter bar. Or a butter bar squared. I don't, I don't I don't understand it. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I got written that stop sign. Anyway, um that's really the only update I've seen to the uh, to the OCP AFI. Uh, I think at this point. It's been six months since uh, it's been authorized. I think people are starting to figure it out. Uh, yeah, you can wear, uh, I think the OD, not the OD green, the uh, Spice Brown flag is a bit more uh, common, I guess. It's easier to find than it used to be. So you can still wear the OD green and black cloth flag if you want, but these are everywhere now. I got issued this flag and my AMC patch after I uh, in processed here. So uh, match comp patches are becoming more uh, common. 
uh, it's the uh, it's the unit patches though that aren't quite out there across the board yet. The 33rd had them when I was leaving Keesler. And the commander here's spoken about uh, maybe he maybe we're going to get our hands on our uh, unit patches here soon, and uh, that's something I would wear centered on this sleeve over here. Uh, that's all in the AFI. So if you have any questions, any any weird uh, concerns regarding dress and appearance in the Air Force, just look up AFI 36-2903. It has been updated since September of last year. But it spells out everything. There's, there's even a table in there. Like, if you are assigned to a squadron, you would wear Matchcom here and your squadron patch here. If you're assigned to a wing, you would wear something here and something there. It all depends on where you're assigned. It gives you a table on the different uh, tabs you can wear, like Security Forces or TAC-P. Uh, there's something called Phoenix Raven and Security Forces. Whatever that is, for whatever reason, you cannot wear the Raven tab. If that's something that you went out and earned or whatever, I don't know why you wouldn't get to wear it. Unless it's like something silly, like you did two CBTs and you went and shot a gun really well. And then, hey, you're a Phoenix Raven. It's like, ah. Eh. But if you like did some Seer School level stuff, then oh yeah, why not? You should be wearing that Raven. Uh, so this is like day nine for me in my, in my unit, my squadron. And I am an officer in charge of a... Uh, I guess a flight and it's, it's, it's cool. I, I'm, I'm talking to people and people could already tell, you know, if, you know, they didn't know from me and my behavior, uh, just be me being me, they can tell, Oh, Hey, he has a maintenance badge. He's prior enlisted. Uh, I've been trying to find where I fit in the grand scheme of things. I'm not trying to overstep, uh, my boundaries. I'm not trying to walk in and be like, Hey, I have ideas. Uh, because this place has been operating fine without me. This this shop that I'm in, uh, one of the, the NCOs I talked to the other day said I'm their third OIC in about two years. Uh, I think these guys are used to autonomy. I think they know how to run themselves. I think they know how to do what needs to be done. They don't need me there standing behind them, looking over their shoulder, telling them what to do, and they already know what to do. And I don't even know really what they do. This isn't what I used to do when I was enlisted. This is a different comm career field. So I'm still learning it. And uh, I'm just kind of staying out of the way. I'm talking to people, uh, gathering information. Um, there's been some, there was going to be a big thing this week. And thank goodness a notum came down and cleared up everything. But um, that was about to be my, my first big project. And it pretty much went away, which is good because it about put a lot of pressure on my guys. I think that's the one thing I'm really looking forward to is, is my guys, you know, having my crew, having, having my people that I can take care of. Uh, I've already gone through the alpha roster a couple different times, making note of, you know, who's struggling on PT. Are they doing what needs to be done? Are they going to run clinics? Do they have waivers? Uh, I don't want to forget anybody, you know, this airman, when is that guy put on A1C? When does that girl uh, go to ALS? You know, I'm getting down data rank and I did uh, a BTZ calculator I found on Google. So there's a bunch of uh, A1Cs that are going up for boards later this year. I want to make sure that the supervisors are prepared. I feel like that's really the big thing of officering, you know, your section chief and your NCOIC, they know this job and they know what their people are supposed to do. And they're directly supervising those same people. I'm not directly supervising anybody except for, I guess, the section chief. That hasn't really been made clear to me yet. But I'm going to just look out for my people and do what's best for them. At this point, I feel like that's really the best thing I can do until I learn more about this job. And then maybe I'll be able to, you know, throw some advice or some counsel in there and be like, oh, you know what? We got to do this. I think this might be the best way to go about doing it. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, because I'm here, I've been talking a little bit more about my OTS experience, how uh, my degree played a factor in it, how you don't need a big degree from a big school to get into OTS. I went to Ashford University, completely online, got a bachelor's degree in military studies, got accepted OTS my first board. I did not go to... The Ohio State University. I did not get a degree in electrical engineering or IT this or whatever. I didn't get one in, in building rocket boosters. No, I I got a bachelor's degree. That was all that mattered. 
I held a 3.96 GPA and I got it done in about four and a half years. Got in, still got in. And uh, that's, I think that's, that's like the big uh, moral of the story is uh, don't, don't be, pers- don't be swayed by, you know, like, oh, well, if they need a bachelor's degree, I got to have like a super badass bachelor's degree. I got to get an awesome degree and something that's relevant from a really good school. Like, I mean, uh, if they're regionally accredited, that might be best. But other than that, that's really it. Just have a good GPA. Especially if you want to pursue a master's degree. Like, if you become an officer, master's degrees are going to be a big part of what will make you competitive when you go up for captain and major. And uh, if you have, like, a 2.5 on your bachelor's degree, um, good luck finding a school that will take you in and not view you as a liability. So... If you're going to pursue a bachelor's degree, maintain a high GPA, no matter what. That should be your goal anyway. But if you want to use that towards a commission, definitely maintain the highest GPA you can. If you can only take one class a semester, that's all you can do. Big deal. As long as you get it done. When it comes to that, it doesn't matter how quickly you finish the race. It just matters that you finish. One of these days, maybe I'll put something together. I still have my OTS package, a a, a folder, a folder this thick, a thick folder, a folder. (laughs) It's it's got everything in it. It's got my letter of recommendation for my group commander. It's got my transcripts. It's got all that stuff in it. I'll probably have to get it out one of these days. I'll probably get it out, and uh, maybe I'll go over it with everybody. OTS has changed, but I do not think the means of applying to it have, you know, you still got to do the AFOQT, you still got to get a bachelor's degree, you know, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this video is running really long. If you stayed through it, uh, thank you. Really appreciate it. Sorry to everybody that subscribed and has been like wondering where I've been. Like I've had comments like, Hey, you should make a video on this or that or whatever. And I don't know. I've been kind of busy. Uh, I love writing. I've been working on the same thing forever and I haven't written anything in months. I'm getting into drawing, uh, I, I draw when I can, but you know, uh, my wife's looking for a job. We just moved and I got a eight and a half month old. It, it's and a dog. It's difficult to do. I haven't played Xbox for more than I think two hours since I moved since February 20th. I'm dying inside. <laughs> uh, I still can, I, I can still get my runs in. I don't run as much as I used to. I really need to. I PT test in like five weeks. Um, I shouldn't be training for a PT test, but I mean, that's the reality of it. It's, it's hard. It's difficult managing life. It's hard. (laughs) It's difficult being alive, (laughs) but, um, you you do what you can. And as long as you don't cut corners on the things that matter, like what's most important right now is being a husband and being a dad. And if a few things fall by the wayside, like, Oh, I, I got metal gear solid too on, uh, Xbox 360 because it's backwards compatible on Xbox One. I really want to play Metal Gear again. I got it off Amazon for like $10. I haven't played it. That's okay. It'll still be there. It'll be there whenever I find the time to play it. But if I suck ass at being a dad or being a husband, uh, who's to say that they'll still be there? You know what I mean? So maybe I'll wrap that up. Uh, and try to tell my, my, my guys that, you know, like in the end, you know, it's got to take care of your family, take care of yourselves. Uh, the mission will get done. And, I mean, I count on these guys to get the mission done. But it's going to be difficult for me to ask them to do the job if they are drowning in their personal lives. So hopefully I'm on the right track when it comes to this whole officer thing. I'll get the hang of it. I I, I should. I mean, I'm, I've been an officer for 10 months. But uh, I haven't really been out in the world uh, 10 days. So uh, hopefully there's there's patience for me here. But I I shouldn't be asking for too much because I hit my 13-year mark on the 25th. So I should know what I'm talking about. I should know what we're doing. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. I'll try to put something together uh, for OTS or for uh, really anything. If you have any questions about anything, just leave a comment and... I will do my best to uh, take you around to it, help you all out. Uh, if I can mentor or just throw a helpful bit out there for one person, then that, that's enough for me. Anyway, y'all have a good day. Happy Friday. Uh, don't forget to file your taxes. Tax day is Monday.